Hi, are you constantly feeling terrible and caught up in this cycle of anger and guilt because you've lost control and started yelling at your child yet again? Well, I get that. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a mind hack that has helped me control my emotions a lot better and not lash out at the kids so much. Just understanding how our mind works has helped me to be calmer and less reactive. So I have a free home emotional climate audit that will help you reflect upon what's triggering you and your child and what are some of the things that you have tried just to take stock of what is happening in your home so you get more clarity on how you can manage your home emotional climate so that it makes for a happier home. So I will link this in the description below. So hi, I'm Abigail and I'm fascinated with helping children develop focus. Nothing makes me happier than seeing a child in flow, deep in focus, working on an activity. Developing focus is the key that leads to learning. So a year and a half back when my child entered primary one, my boy started his after school rages and meltdowns, especially when it was time to start doing his homework. So having to learn Tingxie and Chinese, which Chinese spelling and spelling and doing copying work were some of the most painful activities for him as he would spit on the floor, roll about, or yell mean words. And the longest record of this whole nonsense was 50 minutes. So I myself reacted by yelling at him, hoping to overpower and scold the laziness and bad attitude out of him. I felt I needed to be firm or I would lose the teachable moment. But what I didn't realize is that all that yelling didn't work. And when I wanted him to concentrate or focus on his work, it was just counterproductive. Turns out it's hard to focus when one is feeling stressed. And the better we are able to gain control over for our home emotional climate, the easier and faster we can help the child manage his emotions and then we can seek over to focus and learning mode. So watch this clip and you'll understand how your brain can work on three different modes or levels, okay? And I'll teach you a simple way to understand and remember what those three modes are and how we have more power to change our thinking than we give ourselves credit for. Level one, they call it the reptilian brain. Uh, if you can imagine, okay, a reptile is very primitive. Um, this part of the brain is the lower part of the brain and it controls our fight, flight, and freeze response. Okay? I want you to close your eyes and just imagine Marvel superhero, the Hulk. Imagine that you're in Hulk mode. And if you know the Hulk, he's this green big monster, right? And he doesn't think. He has no rational mind to think. He's just going around wrecking things because he's so angry, okay? And he's definitely in fight mode. But when something um, makes him scared, he reverts back to his human form and then he's in flight mode. He goes into hiding for months and months and, um, and he doesn't come up and face the problems. So that's how we are like um, as a parent. If we are in hawk mode, if we're in fight and flight mode, sometimes we just lash out at our kids. We're not able to empathize with our kids. Or if we are in the other mode, we are fleeing from the problem. We just want to hide, sweep everything under the carpet. We don't want to deal with it. Then we are in flight mode. Both are not very healthy, right, for our relationship uh, with our kids. When we are in hot mode, this is when it's activated, we we meet something dangerous in the evolutionary sense, right? Or in the traditional sense, when we are faced with problems or something dangerous, like a wild animal, okay? And our body needs to decide in a split second to face the danger head on because we can win or run and hide because we, we are likely to be killed. So in this mode, we cannot think rationally or find creative solutions to the problems. In fact, our whole mind effectively shuts down and narrows our choices to only these two, fight or flight so that we're able to pick something and, and and go with it, you know? So this has some applications to our parenting when we are stressed and triggered, right? And in fight and flight mode, our perspectives are limited and we are less able to take the perspective of our child. We are less able to empathize with our child. We are less able to come up with creative solutions to solve the problem. And we may even assign meaning to our kids' actions, which may not even be the truth. We think our kids are out to get us. We think our kids are our enemy because they are making us feel these horrible emotions, right? Um, but we know that when we calm down, we know our kids are not our enemies. They are having a hard time themselves. I want to talk about a third mode, which is the freeze mode, okay? When we are in freeze mode, I think that is really the worst. And that is a problem, modern day pandemic problem. Because when cortisol floods our body and it's 
unable to lower the levels of stress. And this is when chronic stress wreaks a, a big havoc on us. You know, when I talk about fight and flight, it's an acute stress response. That means it's there for a while. And when the danger is gone, we are able to come back to normal. We're able to bounce back. But when we are faced with chronic stress day in, day out, that affects our entire well-being. It's bad for our parenting. You know, we are not able to show up for our kids in the way that they need us to in a calm, respectful and, and creative way even. I experienced this during circuit breaker. My body was so filled with stress hormones, right? I was breaking out an eczema all over and I realized that I couldn't really function and I would just like not not remember any of my kids' Zoom classes or meetings and they missed quite a few. And I was like, what is happening? And only after that, when things kind of got better, then I realized, oh, okay, I was in freeze mode. My brain was just shutting down. So if you are in that state, I want you to breathe, give yourself lots of grace and just recognize that that this is just where you are at and, and just take care of yourselves first before you can take care of the little people in your house, right? So when we know that we are in Hulk mode, we are able to get out of it. First thing, of course, you know, you will, you will have to breathe. Breathe in, breathe out, take long, deep breaths. And sometimes my child would do something and it would actually physiologically feel something creeping up my body, up my arms, up to my neck, up to my head. And that I know is like my blood pressure rising. And I have that one second to decide whether to remain in hawk mode and lash out at my kids or to take the better road. You may react to anger in a different way. I would want you to think, okay, reflect. How does your body react to anger? So the more conscious you are and the more aware that this is how your body reacts, you are able to recognize the signals and you're able to have that split second to make the decision to give in to your to your anger or not, to give in to your Hulk mode or not. So if you find yourself in Hulk mode often and you don't like that, right? That take that audit in the link in the description. And if you want, I will love to walk you through some of your next steps you can take to manage your home emotional climate better, which will lead to your child being in better focus. So I'll see you in the next video soon. Bye.